In Excel, you often want to compare lists. So find out which names are in this one, but not in that one. There are a bunch of ways to do that. For example, get these huge red circles or highlight them different colors or use formulas like getting a list or also using Power Query to get something like this and show you with additional filters as well. My name is David Lama and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tickler Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. And if you just want to download a copy of this workbook, then the link of how to do that is in the description below. All right, so let's get started. So in here, I'm going to select the column of names in that one, which is members, select this other column. Hold down control, so you select two ranges that are not next to each other. Then go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and then choose duplicate values. But we're gonna change duplicates to be unique. And let's just change the color to yellow. Press okay, and there we have it. Pretty easy, that one, right? There is one thing, actually Lisa is in both of these, but not in this list. So it does hide the, this method if you use duplicates in one list. So we're also going to do another conditional formatting rule. Select that, go to additional formatting and choose highlight cell rules, duplicate values. And then just for this one, not for both ranges, we're gonna make duplicates in red. So it pops us here to see that that may be an issue as well. So it's not perfect, but if you, use that other one, then it does help as well. Next up, I'm going to select this column and I'm gonna to go to the data tab and I'm gonna choose data validation. Love data validation, I have lots of videos on them that I'll link to in the description below. I'm gonna choose a list and then the source, I'm gonna choose this one. Then I'm going to press that and click okay. And now it's just given a drop down of those. It does ignore the duplicates and the newer versions of Excel, which is great for data validation but I'm going to click in this drop down and choose circle invalid data, this is important. And now it will draw this big red circle around all of them, including the ones that are both of them in there. I could repeat the process for the second list if you want to go back as well. That's essentially how you do it. Now there's a few formula based approaches. The one that I use a lot is if I insert, I'm going to use a count if. So firstly, I need to make sure that data validation is cleared. So I'm going to say yes there. I'm going to say clear all just for those cells, but kept these ones. If I want to go back to it, circle and valid data. And now here I'm going to say, this is going to be a count. So equals count ifs. I always use the one with an S. You don't have to in this case, but I find that just to learn one, it makes it easier. So select the criteria range to be in the other table. Press F4 to lock that in when I drag down and press comma, then my criteria range is going to be this cell, Stephanie. Press enter and I can see that there is one. And if I drag down, there are ones and zeros. I probably want to go to conditional formatting and clear rules from selected cells because they don't apply to this one. So if there is a one, that means that it has found it. If there's a zero, that means it hasn't. That's why these ones are showing me zeros. And of course, if there would be for some reason a duplicate like this one would be heady then I would get twos here as well and this one then goes yellow because now it can't find it in the other list I just undid that one but just to show you how it would be if there are duplicates now count ifs is a useful one uh, you could also do it with a vlookup or an xlookup but that will just give you the answer or not so if I were to insert here I could do equals vlookup and this one in this table, F4, and then return the first column, and then comma zero, comma false, you kind of need there. And then if it finds it, it will return the name, otherwise it will return an error. The count ifs I think is nicer. Another formula-based approach, which I just kind of came up with actually, is if you do equals, let me first show you. So equals unique, this is a great formula that you can select a list, close your brackets, and then it will return a unique list. So as you can see, Lisa is only there once. Now, what you can also do is if you press comma, you have by call. We're not gonna use that because we have only one column. And then you can say true returns items that appear exactly once. So if I press true there, double click that. Enter, now it has removed Lisa that is including twice. Now, how do you do it if you wanna combine it for two columns? then you need to also use vStack in the middle. Let me show you vStack as well. So equals vStack will take a first array, a second array, etc. So if the first array is this, comma, and then the second array is that, close your brackets, 
then you will get both of them stacked on top of each other. Now, if we combine both of these, we will get a list appears exactly once. And then here I'm going to write equals unique. And then I'm going to write the stack. And then I'm going to say this column, comma, this column. Close my brackets once for vstack, comma, by call, I can skip that one, it's in square brackets, comma, and then exactly once is going to be true. Close my brackets for unique there. And then I get the same ones, Mira, Rob, Myra, Pok, and Vanak. But again, you get this one, this duplicate in one list doesn't appear in the other one. But it's still a good one. By the way, the unique function you can use in Excel 2021 or more recent. But at the time of making this video, the VStack function, you need Excel with Microsoft 365. All right, so let's go through another method. And this one is going to be returning lists. And you can also do things, for example, filter out people who haven't paid since 2018. So Stephanie, I'm not interested in it because she has paid, but her payment is not for whatever, the current period, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this one and we're going to go to the data tab and choose from table or range and press OK. So this opens up the Power Query editor. And if you're not already using Power Query, then it is just absolutely game changing. I'm just going to show you this one feature for it. So I need to actually load both tables. So I'm going to immediately press close and load. So that will load up a new worksheet with my table. I actually don't really care about that. I'm going to delete this because it's just essentially a copy of my table at this stage. And I'm going to load up my second table. So select this. And again, I'm going to go data from table or range. And you can rename these. I can right click on rename. So next what you do is merge queries and choose merge queries as new. And I can click on member names and the other one is going to be payments. And if I click on member and click on name, it's going to try and match these two. It says matches four out of eight rows from the first table. And then in join kind, you can do this thing called a left ante, which is great rows only in the first table. So it's going to give me all the names that are in here that are not in here. So press OK. And just to show you that these are non-matches, so if I were to expand them, these would all be blank. So I'm going to press X because I don't need that step. Now, uh, I also want to, in this case, exclude anyone who has made a payment before that date. So what I can do is I can filter out and I can say after and I can say one slash one slash 2018. And now if I go to merge one, now it's actually also included Stephanie because Stephanie is no longer a viable option. So that is how you can do this one. I could delete this row, click on it, press the delete button on your keyboard. And I could rename this query to be not paid since 2018. And then I press close and load. Close and load annoyingly does load too many tables. So this is unchanged essentially. So I can right click and delete that one. And I can also take this one and just cut the table and then it will come with the query and paste it in here as well. There you go. And now it is linked. So let's say that I say that Stephanie has actually paid in 2024. Now I can refresh and now Stephanie will no longer be in the list. Cool. That's great. So those are all the methods I wanted to show you here. I hope you've enjoyed that video. My name is David Van Arman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tick of the Workplace, I'm covering my channel. So check out my other videos and maybe give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.